<laughs> one day. <laughs> Gotta get them all out. One day. This isn't anything new for YouTube. I just have not done it myself. The old gar trap with a nylon rope. We will be doing something even cooler. We're gonna put it into wood. <laughs> I really just want something that I can put a big dead meat custom eye on. I'm thinking it's gonna need a haircut. That's quite a bit, but we'll do that last. Nine oh eight, by the way. There's what we're cutting off. Twelve millimeter Forstner bit. This is going to be the size of the eye, and I'm just marking it out exactly where it should go. That way, I can carve the chamfers around it. Oh. I don't have specific reasons, but I'm sure you would agree that an American flag eye is going to be most appropriate on this bait, right? Right. Let's get that lip cut out. This is a chunky fella. Look how wide that lip is. But it's that way because my thought is that this is gonna be one heck of a thing to try to move through the water and still have an action, so. We're going wide. See if that fits. It fits quite well. Good old twist wire hardware. Keep this stuff slim, nothing too bulky. That should be enough just to get it to sit upright on the top and float. That's for buoyancy, and you can really defeat that purpose if you put too much lead in it. That was so clean up until the end right there. Damn. Super cool bake soda. Got some five minute epoxy. Scuffed up where this lip connects. And this shouldn't ever go anywhere. You know what, hopefully it does. Hopefully we run into the six foot long nose gar and it just destroys this bait and somehow I still catch it. Hopefully that happens. If not, this is going nowhere. Leave it. I think I'm gonna try to use this to like reinforce the connection of this nylon. Yeah, it just popped through right there. Now this wire can go into that hole and be connected with a mechanical connection. And then inside of the nylon rope, maybe I could put a treble hook too. So anything else that bites this gets hooked up. There'll be a loop connection that I five minute epoxy in and there'll be an option of a treble hook in the tail. Super glue bath. We're gonna seal this bait. Hey, Penny. Hey, hi. 
Starting with white. Wicked fast back green on the top. Coming down the sides just a bit. It's gonna be detail smoke black over this stencil, keeping the black towards the top. I'm being pretty bold with stuff because scales are gonna go over everything. We're getting out the fluorescent red even, and we're gonna put that at the bottom of these bars. Mm. Good old window screen. First color, pearl white. And then I'm just gonna do silver, I'm pretty sure. Towards the belly. Scale reveal. Gorgeous. Looks American. Let's get those eyes on. I'm gonna do a little bit of detail black around the socket before I put the eyes on, but let's get those eyes on. I had the irresistible urge to do that. That was silver. Okay, one of these are gonna have to be a backwards flag. I don't know how illegal that is. If I had two of those, I wouldn't have to do that. Wow, incredible. We're gonna squirt some UV resin in a cup here and apply this stuff carefully. None on lip and none in the hole. I'm gonna have that rotate and even out for maybe like five minutes. And then I just have a light right here. I'm gonna get this plugged in, take this light. After the cure set up a little bit, I'm just gonna sandwich it in there with another light. Don't worry, I got some sunglasses on. I'm not just staring into the sun. That has been a huge concern from a lot of people about the one days, is the UV lights and looking into them. They say it's just horrible for your eyes and you don't even, you can't tell. It's like staring into the sun. It is just receiving quite a bit of UV light in there. All right, I took a lighter to the end of that and I kind of melted all of the nylon strands together. And yeah, just like I did there, I'm gonna stuff it in there with five minute epoxy, a lot of it. Five minute epoxy is mixed. We're gonna fill up that hole first, where the wire goes. Just grabbing it all. I don't want this to fall out. That would defeat the purpose of this bait. Mission accomplished. You knew it was gonna happen. We're going to the pike spot. That's where all the gar live. What a masterpiece. It gets harder every day to get to the pike spot. Oh, this is kayak abuse. Okay, I am ready to see how this bait works before we even launch the kayak. Well, fantastic news, it floats even with a steel leader. I have this big single strand steel leader on, but it plumes and it dives. The only negative is it does not wobble. Yeah, there's no wobble. All right, let's load up, get to the spot. I'll think about what to do while I get there. I might cut it, I might not. Might try to just catch a fish with it while it's long. I sharpened my knife just in case I need to cut it. Oh no. Oh no, I'm gonna have to be careful. <laughs> it's like throwing a parachute catches the wind a little. 
Wow. I just bumped something. We had a bump. Oh, I just had a bite. Just had a big bite. The nylon rope flaps around a little bit. It kind of looks like it has an action just because of that. I'm really close to taking off the big nylon rope thing and just using the crankbait with the hook and it's like a little micro crank and it's cool. This is just so unfun to fish with. It's like fishing with a mop. It kills all the action of the lure. It barely gets recognized. There's fish jumping everywhere. I got a couple bites. No hookups because I probably just bit the rope. I, yeah. You guys didn't see it, but I just, there was a long nose gar right at the nose of the boat. It bumped my lure. It did not get tangled up in the nylon rope. That's pretty discouraging. Man, even with that much, it doesn't have any action. I'm not liking the nylon rope stuff, fellas. I've had much better success just using hooks. I'm sure it's possible. It's just after seeing so many gar hit my bait and not catching one. That's, that's pretty bad. <laughs> it's still kind of like it's got a tail fin, you know? I hope it actually has action. There we go. I feel some thumping. Look at this gar. It didn't want it. Gar took it. Dang. They kind of like it, you know? We're gonna hope nobody steals the kayak. Time for a creek fishing adventure with this goofy thing. I'm so ready to catch a fish today. After you fish for three hours, you're really ready to catch a fish. Gotcha. It's, it's official. Muddy bass. Like nylon rope baits that you cut the rope off of and then fish with anyway. It's official. We got one, fellas. Five, oh, eight. One day complete. That only took eight hours. Fish on. Is it a new species? It is! I probably killed a sunfish. No, that's a bluegill. Some type of sunfish. It's official. Like nylon baits that you cut the nylon rope off of and use as a crankbait anyway. It's official. We caught two species in this video. <laughs> what a success. The one day was a success, but it does not feel like it was. It was riddled with failure. I wrote notes. At the pike spot, the long nose gar, they were everywhere and they were bumping into my bait. They were taking my bait. I literally saw one come to the surface, grab my bait and swim away with it. And with the most intention I've ever done anything fishing wise, I tried to set the hook on it and no, it was frustrating. I mean, I even cut the tail off and the action's kind of garbage still. I don't know, two more, three more hours at the, at the ditch. Might be able to produce a pike. Well, after bobbing around in the kayak for two hours, I think I'm gonna give up. Let's go back to the shop. No pike was produced. You can't win them all. Oh well, where's the bait? Almost unfishable with action. It dives past 10 feet like this, probably because the lip is so wide. 
Generally, the fishing those two days confirmed it's, it was garbage too. I was fishing with prey baits, spiffy kicks, slouches, 1.7s. More than just this, at the ditch for a long time and was not able to produce a fish. But the one day was a success, video's over. I'm gonna go work on the garden, so probably enjoy some bonus gardening. On to the next bait. You're just gonna be level from post to post. That's gonna be a gate and I'll just level it over there. Six feet tall, they're kind of like six by six panels of fence. I have a lot to do. Okay, careful not to cut all the way through. Yeah, I'm gonna be doing that to this thing too much. I think it's about to get aggressive, fellas. Okay. We'll get there, even if I have to poke at it with a chisel for an hour. I'll just shim it. Why don't I use a circular saw? What the heck? What am I doing? Oh, that was a little low. That was pretty good. Get some glue on there. Get some more on that. I actually screwed that up and th uh, forgot that this was a gate post, so. That can come all the way over. What am I doing? More glue. More excessive amounts of glue. I just realized I'll have to cut this diagonally to give the other piece some something to lay on.
20. I got a bunch of these. They're like staple nails. You can just drive with a hammer. Hopefully that holds. I'm gonna try to pull the fence tight, slip a screw in there to hold it tight, and then nail it. Whew, thank heavens for torque screws. You can like get leverage with them and move stuff. I was one too long. That's one. It's not bad. It's pretty sturdy. Once these are all connected, it's gonna be pretty strong. It's like sheathing, you know? 13 more plus a gate to go for another day. One day. <laughs> oh, this is a chunky fella. It is. Incredible. Oh no. Don't worry, I got some sunglasses on. 